So yeah, this is pretty, I would say pretty wild when you have individuals who are people who invested in these card games. And now you might ask, how in the world do I know this guy is a alpha investment patron? Well, uh, I know because of the games he invested in and for Magic the Gathering, I know exactly what boxes he bought because they're the same mother effing boxes that are sitting in my home times a hundred of them. And there's no difference. All these alpha investment patrons, they purchase the same things because what else would they be buying? I mean, they're not buying vintage magic. They're not buying black lotuses. They're buying the same exact sealed collection that the other alpha investment patrons are buying. Now, some buy more than others, but for the most part, and then you look at the wide array of games, there's no one in human earth who plays magic Pokemon MetaZoo. There's no one who even plays MetaZoo, let's be honest. So that takes everyone out of the running. Uh, Flesh and Blood and Sorcery. These are all games heavily promoted by Alpha Investment. These are all games that are promoted as an investment vehicle. I have been gone from YouTube on this channel for some time, and you guys have just been watching the old content that I make in advance. I opened my email. There's 14, 15 people who want to sell me their magic collection, and it's not even just magic. It's all this. I don't want to call it junk, but it's not for me. I don't own a single flesh and blood card. I don't own a single MetaZoo card, and I don't own a single sorcery card. These free games, like for me, it's even hard. I'm, we're doing Weiss right now because my girlfriend loves Weiss, but it's even hard for me to add that game. I don't. We still have no idea how to play the game. We just collect the cards, and, and that makes it easier. Same with Pokemon. We don't play Pokemon. We just collect the cards. It makes it easier. The only game that we actually play would be uh, Magic. We both have EDH Commander decks, but, you know, and uh, her nephew plays Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh, but I do have a collection, so we do talk about that sometimes. Look, man, a lot of these people bought into it as an investment um, you know by the amount of money they want for their collection. And then you look at the collection. I can show you the list of collections. And it's probably my best offer is like $2,000. Like that's what it is worth to me today. So I, it's not even worth it for me to respond to him and tell him that. Because all he's going to do is get angry. This stuff is not an investment. Um, and even, even if he bought from Alpha Investments, he probably put in $18,000 into it. There's no way that he put in over $20,000. He just wants to make money from the invest. You you know he's an investor because instead of buying what he wants, he's being, he's buying what Alpha Investment tells him to buy. It's the same damn list that I see. I mean, out of the 14, 15 emails, seven of them, I would assume, are Alpha Investment patrons, and their list is identical for Magic the Gathering to a T. There's no vintage boxes. There's no older stuff. There's no good stuff in it. Like, let me be honest. Like, if there was some good stuff, maybe I'd buy it. But there's no good stuff in these boxes because they're all the same and they're all very heavily printed magic sets that have not gone up in price whatsoever. Uh, you're talking about Magic the Gathering sets like uh, Baldur's Gate. He really loved that set. You're talking about sets like Core, Core 2021. Talking about sets like uh, Collector's Edition, Throne of the Out, not no, for, not Throne of the Outdoor End. What was that? The first Collector's Edition that didn't really go. Oh, uh, oh God, I forget its name. The first first set that had I have not even looked or thought about Magic the Gathering or card games in probably over a month now. It, man, man, like it is bad, guys. Like it is bad. Let me let me like give you a. Fair, fair warning. Like, no one, I mean, this should be the biggest warning sign in existence. No one should ever invest in this because no one will buy this guy's collection. This guy wants $22,000 for something that he probably paid $18,000 for because he's got to get that return, right? If he had put the money in S&P 500, he would be at $30,000 right now, or whatever it is, right? But instead, he wanted to invest in cardboard, 
And now he wants to put a down payment on his first home, which is also probably not the best time to buy a home, right? I own my home, no mortgage, but as you know, the home prices are astronomically high and his card price did not, did not, you know, it would have been better for him not to buy this shit and just put it in a CD, even just a CD, then he would have his money. Like this whole shit where people are like, oh, I want to buy a home with my investment. That's not going to work, guys. It's just not going to work. And I can I can be very honest with you why it's not going to work is your cards. The, the inv- you cannot have at any given time. I can tell you why the alpha investment model doesn't work for the Patreon investors. At any given time, wh- how many alpha investment patrons are trying to sell their collections? 50 to 100? That's way too much competition at that level. If you want to sell a collection for $22,000, I want some Lotuses. Maybe not some Lotuses, but it would be nice to have one Lotus. You've got to have like an eye-catching card. You can't just have mounds of garbage. You need, you, know, you need like a Mana Vault invention or something like that. And I look at, oh, that's really impressive. So to buy this one card at a good price, I'll buy all the other shit. So I'll about to pay you full price, free, full retail for the Mana Crypt. I get all this other janky like $1 or $2 commons or $1 or $2 rares. That makes sense in my mind, right? What does not make sense is I have to buy $22,000 and not a single box in this stuff is worth over $100, $150. Especially the Meta Zoo stuff. Like, what are you thinking? You know, what are you thinking about this, right? You're not realistic. So these people have put money in. It's called their sunken fall, uh, fallacy theory. They put so much money and probably even their time into this investment and they want to justify, you know, by finding someone even stupider than they were, that they were smart. They want to get that, oh, I got out. And I fell for it not once but twice. You know, when I bought, uh, in, I should never have touched those shit. I should just put the money in the S&P 500 and been done, double my money. But instead, I have all these booster boxes taking up space in my home that are quite ugly. They're very ugly booster boxes, you know? And I'm I'm thinking to myself, wow, that was a catastrophical decision. A catastrophical decision for me personally. And it just didn't affect, but I have the money, it's whatever. I could throw all that stuff in the trash and be no worse off than I am today. But for a lot of people, this was the money that they were investing in. Imagine like a dude dude telling his wife, don't worry, I got you, honey. We're going to put money behind Alpha Investments, new boxes. And when the time comes to put a down deposit on our home, I'll sell it to this uh, dude who hates him. Imagine that's the business plan that this guy is trying to do. That is a mother effing business plan. Like, I, I kid you not, that was... How can I say it? I mean, it is brutal to learn the truth about this. Um, but a lot of people, I mean, just learn from me. I made the same mistake. I did buy this one time from two times. I mean, yeah, it's stupid to buy a second time. Uh, and I got butchered. I got absolutely ran over on the price of this stuff.